And this is our next article. We're going to discuss superhero movie bubble is about to pop. At least in my opinion, after the uh, poorly movies that came out of Marvel is crapping down our throat. Uh, their shows? Yeah, all their shows. Well, not their shows. Well, yeah, their one movies. of their shows. She-Hulk, Doctor Strange, and Multiverse of Madness, Thor, Love, and Thunder. I don't know if you guys have Love seen. Love and Blunder? Love and Blunder. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to discuss this a little bit and see <clears throat> what your guys' thought. So DC just released uh, Black Adam, and it's supposed to revamp the uh, DCU, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the reviews are kind of mixed. And after watching one review and the post credit scene, if you want to know what it is, do you want to know what it is? Did I uh, tell you? Yeah, you told me already. Yeah, I told you. I don't know if we want to... Spoilers, everybody? Uh, Henry Cavell shows back up as Superman at the very end to take down Black Adam. So And he was not supposed to come back. He was not supposed to come back at all. And somehow, we got him back. He is. And then also, Ezra Miller is facing up to 60 charges for stuff, for bad things he's been doing. He's pleading not guilty, but they are bringing him back for Flash 2. He actually just finished doing reshoots for the Flash 1 movie. And then also, James Gunn is picking up two more uh, DC prod uh, movies to uh, do. And then uh, Matt Reeves is coming out with a Rogue Gallery movie of Batman. So, what does that mean? The Rogue Gallery? Yeah, what's that? It is Clayface. He's planning on doing a Clayface movie. Mr. Pig, I think his name is. Hmm. P-Y-E. <coughs> and then, uh, I can't remember the third one. I think Mr. Freeze. Oh. So he is planning on doing a whole Rogue Gallery that connects to his Batman universe. Oh. oh. But after watching She-Hulk and... Doctor Strange and Thor Love and Thunder, there hasn't been a any hard-hitting movie or anything with a superhero franchise in anywhere, really. I mean, the Batman was outstanding. I, I highly enjoyed that one, but from what I'm seeing is that after Endgame, and Austin and I kind of discussed this, after Endgame, the superhero movie is kind of just dying down now. It's about to be the Westerns because the Westerns were really big back in the 80s and all that jazz in the 70s. And now it's just they don't make those movies anymore. Are we reaching that point now? Sadly, yes. I think so. I agree. No. Have you seen Miss Marvel? I have not. And that's another one I was going to bring up because I kind of refuse to see that movie. Yeah, I've been, I've been watching. I watched two episodes yesterday. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for Marvel. It's, but it's you know? like... It's like uh, well, they mess with her power for it's, one. It's like mm-hmm. such a... Um, like uh, Kind of like Saints Row. Yeah. Where, you know, like you took people that were trying to like make sure that you hit every politically correct thing you could possibly hit into a, a thing and they put it in here. And it just ends up falling really, really flat and just like the... Just the story's not... Well, you're not telling a message. You're, you're, I mean, you're telling a message. You're not telling a story. That's the issue. It's like we yeah. got to hit all these bullet points. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. Yeah. It's it's visually interesting, but other than that, it's not not exciting at all. Yeah. And I was excited for Miss Marvel because I like Kamala Khan in the Avengers, Avengers. game. Yeah. But uh, I don't like her in this TV show at all. It's well, like a teen pop. It's like a teen drama. Is yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. And I'm like very disappointed because I was looking forward to Thor Love and Thunder and it just, I thought that was going to be the movie to bring me back to Marvel movies, but unfortunately did not. Because I went to go see Doctor Strange. I thought that was going to be like the next big thing, you know, and it just wasn't. I was just like, okay, maybe Thor. Thor looks great, you know. It's rocking the 80s style and all this stuff and then it just... What a great comic and they did not... (laughs) Do it justice. They missed the point. And then She-Hulk, She-Hulk was okay. But once again, like Brett said, they they are, they weren't pushing a message too much, but it was a little pushed just a wee bit. But it was fine. Okay. I enjoyed it. And uh, she did break the fourth wall, which I kind of enjoyed that aspect to it. And they brought back Daredevil, even though Daredevil was... Uh, it didn't show its true potential in my eyes, but uh, I can't wait for the reboot series that's coming out. So they made him a side bitch. He's not even like. Uh, oh. I know what happens in She-Hulk. I didn't watch it though. You didn't watch it though. No. And then Moon Knight was phenomenal. Moon Knight was great. Moon yeah. Knight was great. But now we're getting to the point where we won't see Moon Knight forever. No. Knight, so. <laughs> but it's like oh, the last great. whole phase of Marvel was 
you had a couple hit and miss, but on this new phase that they're doing, it's a constant miss, 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 miss. You know what I mean? Have y'all seen Thor at all? No. I did. <clears throat> what did you think? It wasn't absolute trash, but it definitely had a lot to be desired. No. Because I read the comic before I saw the show. Yeah. And I was like, damn, this is a good comic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it wasn't the best comic, but it's a pretty good comic. I think everyone should read it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I was like, yeah, it's just not, they didn't have it all. Like, obviously you have to change things for a movie, but I'm like, dude, this should have been way darker because it's a way darker comic. Oh, yeah, it is. And here yeah, we're, we're because, uh, shit, what's the guy's name? Who Tika Waititi, like, he's yeah. a very, like, indie filmmaker, happy-go-lucky, you know, and I feel like that's what really th- uh Thor Ragnarok was, which I think he did perfect for Thor Ragnarok, but he did have help on the story and or directing. I forget which one. Um, So he couldn't like go off. And this is the one where he was able to just like do whatever he wants. And he was like, I was experimenting with every scene. I'm like, dude, you don't do that. (laughs) Like you got to have a clear vision going in. He's just like, yeah, whatever. Funny. I'm funny. (laughs) I'm like, bro, you did bomb this shit. (laughs) Why about you, Brett? What did you think of Dr. Strange? I know you didn't see Thor. Yeah, I thought Doctor Strange was fine. It wasn't anything like what I was hoping it would be. It didn't have the the hype of the Avengers in game or any of the Avengers movies, to be honest. But it wasn't a bad movie. I just felt like it could have been more. <laughs> Watch on Disney Plus. <laughs> Don't go to the movies. It's on Disney yeah. Plus. Yes, and that's what I feel like with these these movies that are coming out. I'm just like I'm not gonna waste my time, you know. And then the whole fiasco with morbius i don't know if y'all seen that one yet nope i've never no, seen my I heard it was god it is good. garbage it yeah. is fucking garbage it's on netflix you know but uh the ending made no sense so uh i'm gonna spoil it spoilers spoil it. so in the post credit scene uh morbius is driving out in the middle of the field or some shit whatever and then the vulture just comes down and you're like not in the same universe like at all but they show previously that he got transported after uh no way home situation happened and got somehow put into morbius world and he's just like hey man i want to start up a team of unique individuals like myself and you and okay and you're like how what what is happening right now (laughs) where where are we going with they're doing a multiverse thing they are they're trying they're trying but there's no spider-man in morbius is this is there is no spider-man exists in morbius so they're trying to create the sinister six without (laughs) spider-man who are they gonna go after or are we gonna have another suicide squad situation suicide squad situation (laughs) yes that's immediately what i was thinking of and then we also have craven the hunter that's coming out here soon with uh aaron johnson taylor and that's another sinister six spider-man villain sounds like dc is very disjointed well that's marvel and sony so sony still owns the rights to spider-man oh, and any, Morbius, yeah marvel? Oh. so sony still owns any spider-man well, property up too. and what sony's trying to do is create their own extended universe with Spider-Man moving forward. That's why in the end of uh, No Way Home, everyone forgets Spider-Man because Sony is slowly taking Spider-Man back. Good, because they haven't <laughs> fucked it up yet and they should keep doing it. So Keep on making them spider But there are other movies like Venom 2. Y'all have seen that one and it was... I haven't no. seen it yet. I, I actually had them on my list of things to watch and I decided to not watch it's bad. any of them. It, yeah. Venom, 1 was, Venom 1 was good. Venom 2, they put too many funnies in it and it wasn't a... Ugh. Serious, serious film God dang it, where dude. it should have been gotta make everything funny now gotta make uh, everything funny you know, like marvel did it well the thing with the dc universe from what i know what i've heard was that um well going with the justice league mm-hmm. you had Zack snyder who was making like i think you were telling me about like yes. trying to make this whole like series of stuff and for some reason there's hbo and then there's like a, the parent company of hbo which i forgot what it was but it's also discovery no before that before, oh, before that, oh, yeah, I don't know. it was like another HBO. I think it was like HBO Max and like HBO. Anyway, HBOs are duking it out, and people are like, "This is why the Z- the Snyder cut got made." Part of it was mm-hmm. that the people were like, uh, "We think this is actually going to be good, and we should do this." And the other people are like, "No, fuck you! Like, we'll just do what we want. Like, we don't need this. Like, fuck you, Zack Snyder." And unfortunately for Zack Snyder, on a lot of that, because uh, while he was filming Justice League, he uh, his uh, daughter committed suicide. Yes. So, yes. and that's why he can come back to finish it. So, WB was just like, "Well, we can bring in Josh Whedon. He can. He did Avengers. He can fix everything." 
And it was a hostile work environment. Josh Whedon told the actor straight up that the uh, movie that Zack Snyder was creating was straight up trash. Um, there was a lot of uh, racial comments, according to Ray Fisher, towards him on other things. And uh, it just turned into a big debacle. And as we saw with the movie, it was just straight up garbage if you've seen the first Justice League. Yeah. When Zack Snyder finally got his cut out, it was... Uh, Everyone loved it. Yeah, it was phenomenal. And the story he was telling and the ending, he finally came out and said what it was all going to be about and how it was going to end at the very end. And I thought it was going to be glorious. It was going to be amazing. But unfortunately, we will not see that at all unless Black Adam... Unless Dwayne The Rock Johnson will pull more strings like he's doing now, then the DC universe can possibly survive. And him bringing back in uh, Superman into Black Adam is a big game changer. But unfortunately, the movie is not great. From what I hear is that Dwayne Johnson is not putting in his full performance that he should be. Yeah. And that the movie is Mm. just a bunch of pretty colors and lights happening. So... It has a lovely 41% on Metacritic right now. Oof. Yeah, we're on the decline for fucking we are <laughs> superhero on, movies. Superhero movies are done, especially after watching... Uh, there's a Netflix series called Jupiter Ascending, and it was based off a comic book. The show's outstanding. I actually highly enjoyed the show. It's nothing like The Boys. It's nothing like um, a Marvel movie or anything like that. It's a very serious movie, uh, TV show. It's basically about a retired superhero with his, uh, his kids. Is it Ju- it's not Jupiter Ascending. That's a space opera film. From not that one. God damn I was like, wait, that's not, not Jupiter it. Ascending. <laughs> Son of a bitch. What is that movie called? What is it on? It's on Netflix. It's a Netflix, Netflix superhero film, uh, TV show. Not Umbrella Academy. Not Umbrella Academy. Right. Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah, Jupiter's Legacy. But uh, that show was outstanding. It got canceled right away. Wow, like, why? Not even for season two. And I'm getting to a point after watching like so much superhero content, the boys, this one, oh. all the other stuff, it's just getting to a point where it's just, we're Too saturated much. with superhero stuff, no matter yeah. what. Even Sylvester Stallone's new movie was a superhero film. He played an old retired super, superhero. And I just think we're getting <laughs> yep, to a we've point. We've gone too far. <laughs> I back. think we're just getting to a point where um, superhero films, TV, or anything dealing with superheroes is basically dying out. Unless Marvel can pull something out of their ass, but every time I'm like, this movie's going to do it for me, it's going to bring me back. Like Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. This better save me. Because if it doesn't, then I'm, no, I'm done with superhero no, films. No, well, it's the, not. the thing, I'm too, sorry, is I feel like <laughs> is even if it does save you a little bit, I feel like we should, as consumers, be like, we, this, this needs to stop for a This is while. enough. They've they've done it so many of these movies, they've oversaturated it so much that it's just like there's a point you can take a break, you know? Yeah. It's like you don't have to be the, the hard part right now is just like Hollywood generally, just like there's nothing original that's ever coming out. And it's just like let's take existing properties and figure out how many times we can rehash them. Mm-hmm. And that's like all that's really happening and it sucks because it's like where's the I mean there, there is good content coming out like T V streaming services and stuff like that here and there, but <clears throat> this kind of thing where you have like Marvel, just like I mean, they're they're beating a dead horse at this point. They need to yeah. just like oh, let yeah. it sit for a little bit, let a new generation fall in love with it again, you know, in five or ten years, something like that. I mean, yeah, like give it a break and then come back to it. But who's who's the director for She Hulk? Oh crap, I can't remember her name. Okay, something Gal, I think, and I believe she said that she Cat Coro. Cat Coro. <laughs> Kakarot. Kakarot. <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently, she said that she actually didn't read the comic, the comics, and that she was like, "Oh, superheroes movies are like this and like that, and you know, we're gonna get away from that." And I'm like, "But that's why the first three phases of the MCU were so popular is because mm-hmm. that's what people wanted to see. Why would you turn it on its head?" And that just seems to be the thing with all the stuff coming out right now. Like, they're, I feel like they're just really flipping things on their head and being like, oh, this will work. It's mm-hmm. like you're getting people who really don't enjoy this stuff. Yeah. Like, she said that she isn't the, the methodical layout of superhero movies are just not, not fun, not good. And I'm like, yeah, they mentioned that a lot in She Hulk. But yeah, yeah. you're making one. Yeah. Like, who, Kevin Feige, why did you greenlit this? <laughs> 
So that's another big thing that's where we're kind of stuck at is like Marvel just got a hold of Fox. And now we have Fantastic Four. We have X-Men coming into play. And what sucks, whenever they brought that, those contracts in, um, those actors that are playing those characters have to play those characters for until 2025, I believe. So we have to kind of wait a little bit longer for even X-Men to show up. Um, but luckily, we are getting uh, Deadpool and Hugh Jackman coming back to yeah, play. Yeah, buddy. And I think that's going to be a big saving grace for Marvel if they do it right. Oh, that got spoiled to me before I actually saw the trailer and I showed it to <laughs> Lizette. She was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's coming back. And on top of that, Universal can finally make, not Universal, Disney finally can make a Hulk movie. Only reason why they've been holding off for so long is because Universal still technically owned that property. Ugh. I hate all this bullshit. It happened way back in the day whenever I know, I Marvel know. sold off their properties. Uh, movie companies were buying certain characters and yeah. not the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's too expensive for so crazy. Yeah, it's too expensive. <coughs> so, but yeah. yeah, I think it's done and over. Superhero films, TV content, anything is just done. Let's yeah. move on. <laughs> bring, bring Literally, back, bring back the Ring of Power video game. <laughs> What? I don't know. Just think of some other property that they can fuck up. Fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. They did it already. Yeah. Yeah. 